Hi, uh, and welcome to the uh, next installment of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, some folks have seen me here on Nantucket. I do elder law. Our firm, we have 57 lawyers. We do kind of everything, but this is all I do. Um, what I decided to initiate here in Nantucket, in addition to the seminars I do, is a set of interviews with people that um, you should know, people who you should know uh, as elders or as people who have family members who are elders here in Nantucket. Uh, I've just started this series and wanted to start it kind of early on with Rachel Christian um, because she plays such a huge role here in terms of how um, senior policy is developing and among seniors who are really at risk. So Rachel, thank you very much. No, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to come over. I appreciate you inviting me. And, and it was great. I remember when I talked to you originally to find out that you are the classic local, right? Yes, you, I am. You grew up here, <laughs> right? I, I, I could tell when I tried to email you and it, was, it wasn't even our creation, it was our day. It was our day. And I said to myself, ah, oh, this is a really local. Yeah, I, that was the maiden name. Yes. Yep, I kept that as it was easier than creation. Easier uh, than creation. When I say creation, nobody knows who you're talking about, but yep, when you say yep. Rachel Day, they... Well, see, I'm French Canadian, so I... I remember. I, I, so I said, well, I could actually spell this. This yeah. is great. So tell me about you. Tell me about your background and how you ended up doing what you're doing and now what you're doing. Okay. Well, it's a little bit of an interesting story, I'd yeah. say. Um, I was born and raised here. Mm -hmm. I have some, you know, generations of family here. Still on the island. Still yeah. on the island. Yeah. Um, so I had originally gone to school and I went to Yukon. Yeah. Go Huskies. And I wasn't really sure where I wanted to go. I originally went for physical therapy. Yeah. I had done a great internship at the school when I was in high school here and thought that that was 100% what I wanted to do. But once I started getting into the classes in college, I kind of learned that I liked the people aspect of it, maybe not so much the actual physical hands-on stuff yeah. with the body parts and all of that. Um, so I kind of switched my major and I went in a complete different direction and I went for early childhood education. Yeah, that's a complete switch. Yep, total complete switch. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I think a lot of people when they're in school, they kind of do a little soul searching maybe on what they really want to do. And I thought that that was it. I wanted to do early childhood education, maybe um, special needs children, things yeah. of that nature. So I minored in that yeah. and was still a little uneasy on, is this where I want to go with my master's? So I came back home, of course, and it was uh, getting to the end of the summer this and was after you had graduated. This from was your after I had yeah. graduated. It was so 2004. It's time. It's, it's time it was, now, it was time. Right? I needed to decision, get a job yeah, and figure yeah, it out. Yeah. And um, you know, my mother was wonderful. She helped me, and she said, "Okay, baby bird, get out of the nest now." <laughs> and um, there was a job that opened up at the Saltmarsh Senior Center. Mm -hmm. um, and my mom had worked for the town for many, many years, and so I knew how wonderful it must be to work for the town and decided that maybe I would apply for that position and yeah. I got it. Um, so I actually found that a lot of my early childhood education stuff had come in handy and I was at the Saltmar Senior Center for about a year mm -hmm. and I decided that working with the elderly was something that I really had a great passion for. Never thought about it in school, it wasn't really a major that uh, popped up on the list right. of things to choose from, so right. well, to speak. And it hasn't, until recently, it, it really, really hasn't. wasn't. You know? Nope, it has not been in the focus very often, yeah. um, which is a shame because it certainly is a field that's not gonna go anywhere and it's a yeah. needed geriatric field for people to grow into. Um, so I decided that okay this is where I want to be but I kind of hit my learning curve there there yeah. was a little bit not much more I could m move and a position opened up at the island home uh, it was actually the assistant to the director of nursing Gail oh. Ellis who's still there yeah what, and is, what is her name Gail Ellis Gail Ellis mm -hmm. yeah and I applied for that and I got it um, and I moved over there in uh, 2005, June of 2005, yeah. and after a couple of years, Pam Merriam was the administrator, yeah. and she must have seen some good potential in me and said, have you ever thought of being a nursing home administrator? And I said, nope, no. never had. And they, between her and Gail, they really started um, kind of grooming me a little bit. I yeah. learned an immense amount of stuff about senior populations and just being in there and decided that 
um, with a little urging that it was a good idea to go into an administrator in training. And that's when I got um, licensed in 2009. I did the first split um, AIT, as they call it, for administrator in training. And, train. and yep. I did half of it on Nantucket under mm -hmm. Pam with the Island Home. And I did the other half under Bill Bogdanovich um, from Broadreach Healthcare in Chatham. Oh. Yep. So and, you, and were you literally just physically going back and forth? Yep, I went thing? back and forth. I was on island, I think it was Monday and Friday, and I was over with Bill Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And it was great um, going over there because Liberty Commons is their nursing home, mm -hmm. but Broadreach Healthcare had an assisted living. They had a hospice. They had oh. a bunch of, they had a long-term care unit. They had a short-term care unit. So that was my first real look at kind of how all of those pieces come together. How and, and the way that they could be integrated. Because so, you correct. really had, in that case, one group that was integrating all of these. Yep. I know we were talking about that a little bit earlier. Yes. You know? Yes. Yep. So that's very exciting. Yes. So, and that's where and I that's was. Where you ended up. And I yep. ended up becoming the assistant administrator of the Island Home. Um, and then some consolidations happened throughout the town. Pam moved on to the director of health and human services position with the town and yep. they put me in as the administrator and I've been there ever since. And you've been and you've been having a good time? I have. That's great. So, um, so tell us a little bit about the island home. I, I you know we are our, 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 excuse me about our island home. Our island home. Uh, you know obviously I heard about it a lot before I came mm -hmm. here and now I, since I've been here for the last few years I've been stopping in more and as an outsider looking in I as a in the nature of my work, I go to nursing homes a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just, you, you just feel you walk in, it's this friendly place. It is. I mean, it, you feel that it's a staff, that's all about staff, but it's also the size of it, it just feels good. I mean, yeah. obviously the view is great, everybody gets that, yeah. but it also just <laughs> feels like a really nice place. So how many people are there and, 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 and who is there typically and, and kind of w where are they in their life? Mm -hmm. Just tell, tell us about our island home. Sure. Uh, it's a 45 bed facility. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had a wait list in a really long time. We kind of run around 43 beds. Uh, we do get a lot more people that come from after going off island or having a stroke mm -hmm. or, you know, broken leg or things or hip replacement. We do get a lot of the short term rehab and that they go back home, which is wonderful. Um, I think when I first started, it, we didn't have as much of that. Really? Yeah. We, um, Pam and Gail and a few of the other members of the Island Home at the time worked to get recertified in Medicare because the Island Home wasn't certified at that time. And I think that was about 2007 when we got recertified for Medicare. So we were kind of just up and coming and we've yeah. gotten better through the years with so, a little so bit of So because you got recertified in Medicare, that meant people who were there even for short stays. Yeah, we could, could do the short term Medicare rehab cover them and for, I see. all that for. I see. So before we were just Med Medicaid, Mass Health, or private, yeah. Yeah. and now we were able to help serve a population of individuals. Uh, you know, the hospital has the swing beds, yeah. and sometimes when they reach a certain level with the swing beds, they end up coming to the island home for a little bit more rehab before the way, we send them back home. I didn't mean to interrupt you. By That's the way, tell, can you just talk a little bit about swing beds? Because I've I heard that term and I've heard it in other places, but a lot of people will hear that and not quite know what that means. Sure. Um, we are unique here in that the hospital has Medicare certified swing beds, which means mm -hmm. they can do a lot of intense short-term rehab and Medicare reimburses them. Even, even though they're still in technically a hospital. They're in a whereas hospital. Whereas normally that would happen they, in a rehab setting. And they setting. bill and they operate similar to how, as we call SNFs or skilled nursing facilities would yeah. do. So they, they count the same amount of days. So if they use so many days there, they use so many days here. I see. Um, so I see. it's one of those things where it's not just an acute stay in a hospital, there's a different level of you know criteria to meet and things. The same way, in order for them to come to, you know, our island home under Medicare, they have to have a three-night acute qualifying stay. They have their own type of rules like that, and they yeah. operate similar, but obviously they're under a hospital rather than a long-term care facility, so the rules are different, but yeah. the basis is kind of the same. I see. And when they come to you. Is there is there a limit to the amount of time they can be there for Medicare? For to be Medicare, paying? yes, they can have a possibility of up to a hundred days. Up to a hundred days. Yep, as I long see. as they continue to meet the level of criteria. And are the short term are the folks who are there short term, kind of integrated throughout the population, or yep. is there really a section of the nursing home? Nope, I have seen many nursing homes that have mm -hmm. uh, like an Alzheimer's or dementia care mm -hmm. wing, or like in Liberty Commons, they had an entire 
area of the building that was just specific for that short short term rehab. Yeah. Um, all of our beds are dual certified, so they could. It's more based on the need of where the person is, or is is that yeah. where the open bed is? We don't really have a section of the wing or specific rooms designated just to that. In a way, that's a good thing. We I was kind of I mix was, around. Yeah. And we get to place people. Yeah. We recently had. Uh, somebody that came in and come to find out her roommate was somebody that she was in school with. So they bonded and maybe in a different facility where you have designated beds, uh, they would not have met. Right. So it's, it's, it is definitely, it's a smaller facility and we do kind of call each other a nice small knit family there. Uh, you do, you know, as you described, I've had many people come, even surveyors from the Department of Public Health that come down and do their annual inspection on us, um, yeah. family members. We've had um, ombudsmen or individuals from other nursing homes that are here on vacation that just stop in out of curiosity of what does the island's nursing home look like? Right. And they say the same thing. There's just this energy when you walk in the building. You can tell that there's a lot right. of connection. There's not, you know, there's not a smell. It's an institutional looking building, but it's not an institutional feel. Yes. And we definitely pride ourselves on that. We don't want people to feel like a typical person going into a nursing home feels. And I think there's a lot of stigma against nursing homes. Oh, yeah. You know, a oh, lot of people sure. still look at them as a place to be depressed and die, basically. It's dreary, it's sad, it's not home with your loved ones. And well, we I, definitely I try to curve that. that. I was gonna say, I would say that for my clients, that is the goal of life is to never get to never a nursing home. Never get to a nursing home. And, and I think a piece of that, and that's why it's really fascinating to listen to what, you, what you're accomplishing there, a piece of that is your mental sense of what that means, of yep. what nursing home means. Yep. So it isn't, in nursing home for them isn't the fact that there are nurses there, right? Because yeah. that is a really potentially very good thing. It was yeah. something that really helps them. It's all this other stuff and it sounds like you're addressing a lot of the other stuff. So let me ask you a question, are there, have, have there particular incidents that you can recall, or particular things that, that were real kind of tension points or that resulted from the fact that this is this general population that's everybody's together? And how do you deal with that? Or, or, or does that come up? Does it, do, do those incidents tend to not happen? I don't think they really tend to happen. I don't know if it's some of the, just being an island community and knowing people is what has created that type of atmosphere yeah. that's kind of eliminated any of that tension. Um, you know, there's many people there that I've known since I was a little girl that come in and it's nice because you know their families and it's very rare that you don't know a little background on the person before they come in. Yeah. I think that's what makes us unique. In other yeah. nursing homes, it's a, it's a name, it's a family member that walks in, you, it's the first time knowing them, meeting them. Um, I can't say that it never happens that, you know, I, I mean, it blew us away a while ago. We had an individual who passed that had been with us for a really long time and you read a little blurb out of their obituary and said, oh my God, I never knew they did that. So there are right. parts of people's lives that we do miss, but usually when we hear that somebody might be coming, it's like, oh, I know them, or oh, that's so-and-so's mother, or you know, you have that connection already. Right. We do have uh, people who will come in and the family is having a hard time knowing that this is the placement that they're doing. You know, uh, They'll say things like, my mother or father said, please never put me in a nursing home. I don't ever wanna go to the island home. I don't ever wanna go into a nursing home. And they struggle with that decision to do that. Yeah. And we definitely try to help people understand that sometimes it is the best thing for them. I have seen many people who were at home and the family wanted to keep them there and they want to stay there, but they end up coming to us and there's more socialization, there's more interaction that they didn't get in their home. There's more activities and it actually kind of brought them out more. Yes. And they end up becoming not happier, but they, they start to thrive a little bit more. They start to heal a little bit more and actually have a better quality of life. I think from the way you describe it, I think happier is really the, the correct word. I think one of the things that I've really come to believe for a long time, I really thought that there were these, this, I'm thinking specifically of folks with Alzheimer's, that there were this cluster yeah. of symptoms that were related to Alzheimer's. And there were the standard cognitive symptoms. I can't remember stuff. And as things get bad, I really can't remember stuff. Yeah. Like I can't remember how to brush my teeth. I can't remember how to put yeah. on clothes. And there were all of those. And then there were these others. There, were this, there was depression and anxiety and mm -hmm. all of these really, really hard things mm -hmm. that I had always assumed were inherent to 
Alzheimer's, and I've really come to believe that's not the case, that, there, that so much of that comes from the way you're being treated, yeah. the way you think about yourself, because certainly as you're getting into that situation, if you're getting more advanced dementia and you, st and you know you're slipping, yep. that's gotta be pretty depressing. Yeah. But I think a lot of it too is just the way that people are treating you yeah. that is causing you to just keep thinking that you're such a dope, you know, because you're not really being, people aren't really talking to you or they're yeah. talking past you. Yeah. And it sounds like you're really kind of are able to address a lot of that stuff yeah. in our island home. Yep by really focusing on people. Yeah. So happy might we be the do, right word. You know? Yeah, <laughs> we do at the initial admission of um, when they come in, we do ask family, we ask them, we mm -hmm. go through a series of kind of who are you questions. What are your likes? What are your dislikes? Yeah. What are your favorite foods? You know, some of those simple questions. What time do you like to get up in the morning? What time, you know, we do try to stay away from a strict schedule yeah. that I often hear or when I read articles and things, they talk about you know resident-centered care. And I think that we've been doing that for a while at the Island Home. And you wanna try and move away from, it's breakfast time, it's this time, get up, time to go, time to do this, the regimented yep. stuff. And you try to get back to what the person likes to do. Right. Um, you know, Some people like to get up really early, some don't. Let's find a way to accommodate that. Let's not make it about staff convenience. Let's make it about what is the best way that this person can feel good and get up and get interacting with others and have a great day. And have a great day. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that's really eloquently put. Thank so, you. <laughs> so now you've been doing this for a while. That's really exciting. Tell me, how do you imagine the, our island home being the same or changing as time goes on? Sure. And, and how do you imagine it connecting with other things? I have to say, as we were, I was talking to you earlier, I got off the boat today, right? Because I knew mm -hmm. I was going to be interviewing you. Uh -oh. And I pick up the, the INM. The INM. Or the Inky. I'm sold that's the Inky, right? Yep. Now, that's, that's, now that's maybe a little bit too local for me. The <laughs> INM. And I read a story about Sherbin Commons and how yes. Sherbin Commons, the selectmen just voted to help Sherbin Commons stay open. Yep. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, and I'm actually going to visit some folks over there this afternoon. Great. Uh, and meet Mr. Worth, actually. Yes. Um, but it also says a part of the deal was that there's, a, a, according to the selectmen, that there's a piece of the property that's being reserved in case our island home ever goes there. <laughs> yes. So. I'm just mentioning Fingers that that's crossed. what I read in the paper. <laughs> so from your perspective, how, where does our island home, I shouldn't say where does it go, but how does it, how does it evolve in the future? And at least, well, very important I think for me and for a lot of folks, how does that connect into everything else about Nantucket that makes mm -hmm. Nantucket a place where you can grow old and grow frail and die and be happy about it, Yep. right? About yep. the whole thing. Yep. Um, so this actually isn't new to mm. the Island Homes concept. Back in, I believe it was 2007, um, Pam worked with a consulting group called Brujan. It was Bruce Glass. Uh, mm -hmm. He's still around. He still works with the Island Home a lot and his wife, mm -hmm. uh, who has passed away. But he continues to assist Excuse us me. in work. Did with I us. tell you that you're always supposed to put up your phone? <laughs> Continue, please. And they worked with an architect ma named Charlie DeMarco to improve the Island Home at its current location. Mm -hmm. Uh, expand it, maybe add more beds. This was a time when we had a really long wait list and things like that. How That's to right. improve the space that we currently have, where we currently are. Um, or this was also during a time when Sherburn Commons was beginning and things of that nature were happening and they talked about moving the island home into where the industry kind of started going as a whole for long-term care, which was similar modeled after a continuing care community where you would have an assisted living yeah. and a nursing home or a long-term care unit, yeah. maybe even a couple independent living units on the same site. Sounds like a lot of what you were describing in Chatham, that, yep. you, that, that kind of model that you'd see yep. in Chatham. Mm -hmm. And that's what, something that they wanted to try and do back then. Uh, the project kind of stalled out and there were multiple different plans in place. Yeah. Uh, one was to keep the wings and this, you know, we call them wings. Right now mm -hmm. the island home, we have like a south wing, a north wing, a west wing. It's all yeah. broken out. And to kind of expand around and connect them and do that or do a very similar model out on the Sherburn Commons property because it was owned by the town. I see. Um, what we call this model, what we're currently in, is an institutional model. And that's the one thing that I think 
causes a little bit of putting on the brakes for what we're trying to do right now at the Island Home is it's still very institutional looking. It's old. It's white long hallways. It looks like a hospital. Looks like a hospital. You, right. you, most people think of our residents, our family at the Island Home who live with us as patients. Right. Uh, and we don't like to call them patients, ever. And it's one of those things where you really want to get them away from this is an institution, a healthcare institution that you're living in. You want them to feel like you're in a home, that you're in a home-like environment. So during that time, they also started looking at what they called a cottage model. Mm -hmm. So you did individual cottages for individual groups, I see. all kind of connected together. I see. And now we're at that point where we're starting to revive that a little. And uh, that's probably where keeping a section of the land for the potential for our, an our island home or a mm -hmm. new our island home to go is also coming from because it was kind of in the mines back then yeah. and it's starting to come up again now. I see, um, I see. Our building, it, it's, it's old. It was built 1980. It was built in a time when maybe that institution was what they wanted the long hallways, the shared right. rooms. Uh, there's no individual private baths. There's no private rooms. There's you know drafty windows sometimes when you come up in the winter. There's yeah. peeling paint. You mean it gets there's, windy here sometimes. Yeah, just a little, <laughs> not much. And you know it's just you, you can see it even when you first pull in. Right. It, you know, you see a garage is the first thing families see. And it's just, it's a very just, it just looks a little dreary. That's why we try to be so cheerful about the care and what we do there to offset the look of the building or the yeah. feel of doing that. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people forget that some of our residents, it's hard. They, it's, it's almost like a dormitory. They have communal baths. They don't have their own private bath. They right. don't have all of that. And so to, so to really adapt that kind of place, if the goal really is to be looking at people as all individuals in a yeah. family, you need a Absolutely. very different kind of structure even, right. right? You just need a lot to have yep. happen. And yeah. there was a uh, directive by the Board of Selectmen to yeah. convene a Our Island Home long-term work group, which yeah. David Worth from the Sherburns group was a part of, as well as Bruce Glass and Pam Merriam and myself. And we talked about all these things. You know, where is the industry going? What's the best quality of life for the residents? What does the island need? What are, what does our elder population need? Yeah, How can yeah, we yeah. make the island home better? Right. What can we do with this aging building that is just out of date, that is institutionalized, that people live there? How can we make it better? And we went back to that cottage model again. And yeah. it truly is something that I think people could thrive on. I was actually just reading an article that was put in the New York Times um, that talked about the greenhouse model. And the cottage was model would gonna, be very similar to the greenhouse model. I was model. just going to ask you about the yeah. greenhouse model. And, and that's kind of where this idea is stemming from. Yeah. Um, it would be an area where they would have private rooms, private baths. They could eat when they wanted. They could participate in the preparation of meals, the laundry. It would be a complete different setup where they would almost be like they're in a home. with they, you know, they have roommates. They're in a home in with a their home. own... Area that they feel like they're not yeah. in an institution, they feel like they're in a home. We would love to do that and build that model out at Sherburne Commons because there's already an assisted living out there. There's independent cottages out there. It just makes the most sense to place all of those services in one in area one rather scattered across in the island. Place. And I know that there's so many people that are attached to that view, trust me. I am as well. There's many <laughs> residents and family that love to sit out there and watch the boats go in and do all of that. So, but so, to build those cottages on that location, it's just not possible. Right. So, Rachel, I was hoping to get to <laughs> how the island home fits into a lot of the other stuff in the island. And I think you've already, you were always talking about that, mm -hmm. already talking about how that fits in. But this actually will give me a great opportunity to invite you back. Wonderful. To talk about some of those things <laughs> and how and, and what the kind of what all of the, how the, all the services in your view should connect, mm -hmm. right, from your perspective where you are right now. Yes. And thanks a lot for coming in. As I said, Thank you. We're, we're looking forward to seeing you again. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing Rachel and others uh, on later episodes of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you very much.